the main event um, with Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, and Hangman Page against the BCC's Brian Danielson, John Moxley, Claudio Castagnoli, and Wheeler Yuta. And we've got a live performance by uh, the violent what? The violent... Uh, the violent idols. The violent idols. And yeah. this um, this front man for the violent idols um, certainly was uh, debated um, in terms yeah. of this man's uh, choice of mask. I'm imagining this is like, dude, I've never heard of this band before. I imagine this is his, uh, his mask he wears. But to someone that has never seen them before... Um, I think uh, Max Caster would have definitely uh, taken issue with um, the. Yeah, it was a mask. black mask with like, you know, a bit of red, like on the chin. And uh, obviously, if you see if you see the imagery and I think with the, the idea of blackface on the mind, thanks to that Max Caster rap, that's immediately the first thing I certainly thought of. Um, I think even without the rap, that would have been the natural connection you would have uh, made to this sure but i mean it was also fresh on the mind which probably didn't help things but i mean um i i, I this is not like i think that big of a band to my knowledge like at least judging by their instagram count uh follower count um the guy normally wears max i i guess it's like a slipknot type of type of thing <laughs> um so kind of unfortunate and and maybe just um poor choice for any night but you know it's a great color for a mask, anything but that, any other yeah. color, probably mm -hmm. is okay. Right. That'd be a good, uh, good, good rule. So they are performing wild thing as BCC enters through the crowd and they've all got like their, their like uh cut off like jackets with, with their, their mock jackets. Yeah. Yeah. And they've got the names on them with the best one being Claudio's that just reads Swiss. Yeah. That's Swiss. the next name. That should be his name after this. Oh, Swiss. sure. So what's Yuda? Yuda Yuda just says Yuda, right? Yuda. <laughs> and Danielson was what? He didn't, didn't have one. I didn't see Danielson's if he had one or not. Uh, we also had Don Callis on commentary. So you knew he was getting involved somewhere. And dude, this was just insane to follow because we have eight guys and they are in all different parts of the arena and eventually backstage way and, you have and, the eye for this like what did you think about the directing of this match and trying to <sighs> keep on top of everything because when, when the camera was not on nick jackson for about five minutes all i'm thinking of is there's no way this guy is just taking a powder for five minutes what is this guy doing and not realizing none of it's being captured it was chaotic yeah which i i think helps um, is part of the intent of the match, you know, like I, I'm not going to quick cuts and violence that yeah. kind of does add to the, the chaos that you are. Convinced. Plus you had, you know, this dude in the blackface mask playing wild thing the entire time, you know, like it's just, it, this match was stimulus overload. Okay. And I think that was like the effect that was intended. And, and therefore if, if, if the camera or if the director misses a few things here and there, some things that like, man, like, like, you know, for instance, like, uh, Kenny taking or, or Mox taking like, you know, the, the, um, the thing into the, the, the barbed wire, um, some of those things that you, you would hope, um, that they would catch, but the general feeling of chaos, I, I think was effective. Oh, I, I certainly think they, they conveyed that, 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 that portion of it. And I, I'll be honest, like I, I did not feel this like th this was crazy and I'm sure it was a, a nightmare to try and uh, mm -hmm. block all of this and, and kind of uh, direct this. But I, I, it, it was, it to me was just like added to the chaotic sure. nature that you're, you're trying to get across here. Um, so like everyone thought the first person to bleed was Rick Knox. <laughs> we don't, of course we don't see how. Like no, no, do bleeding. plenty of people bled, and I cannot tell you what what caused it, including like Moxley must have just seen Steve Macklin on Friday and just yeah. made a mental note that he I, must have I, just sneezed. And started he bleeding. could have, he could have. Uh, one early uh, moment of the match sees Hangman Page face to face with Brian Danielson, and he removes the eye patch and has a screwdriver. Uh, but then Yuta gets involved, dude. Uh, Wheeler Yuta, they gave so much b before we even get to the ending. He was like. The guy that was always there to save, he got to kick out of the buckshot lariat. They mm -hmm. made a concerted effort that this was a leveling up for Yuta, who yeah. was going to be, in many ways, like the MVP for the BCC. 
he definitely gained the most out of this. I mean, you have, you know, eight guys, seven of which are already established stars, um, people who have won championships. Yuta is just sort of like the, you know, still the young line of of this mix, and he came out of it gaining the most for sure. The Young Bucks made their way up to the entrance, and for the first, what would you say, five, six minutes, they're continuing to play Wild Thing, and you're just wondering more how More than that. Dude, they played like three rounds of Wild Thing. Yeah, it went it went for a period. I didn't know how long this guy's voice. What did was you think last. about it this year? I mean, because they they tried the gimmick last year. This this year was a live live band. If the BCC are involved in anarchy in the arena again, do we get it again next year? Um, to me, it was. I was glad that they cut it off when when they did. It was it was fine. I would I would not have had this gone any longer. I think it would have become a detriment. Oh yeah, yeah, no doubt. Uh, um, I, I and last year they cut it off at some point too. You know, yeah, but, eventually. But I mean, just even the idea of it, I I liked it. You know, it's part of the DNA of the match at yeah. this point that they it's have just crazy. It's hard to focus. You could barely hear the announcers. You know, it's like it, it, again, stimulus overload. I think was the point of the match. So the Bucks make their way to the entrance and they super kick the uh, the the front man here, and uh, and he's done for the night. Big baby face reaction. Yes, me. yes. Uh, Moxley and Omega fight near the entrance and they fight over the large double or nothing poker chip that bonds these two going back to the first double or nothing. And like any poker chip has barbed wire attached to the back of it, um, which both men ended up getting suplexed on and Omega um, getting a fork stabbed into his forehead. So (laughs) Matt and Claudio fight into the concourse, which sees Claudio use a giant swing delivering Matt's head into the trash can. And uh, Actually, at that point, when I saw his head go into that trash can and then do like a flip off of the um, like the counter where the concession area is, I was thinking at that point, like Matt is just killing himself in this match. And at the end of this, I was like, <laughs> like this guy just came in and he was like, let's let's see what my body can withstand in this match. That seemed to be mm-hmm. Matt's uh, wish. Yeah. The announcers start to debate about what is stuck in Moxley's back. If it's glass, if it's a part of the chip, if it, if they didn't know what was lodged in his back, but there, there was, was something be- besides barbed wire attached to the chip. And it was really hard to tell. Cause it was like some black, um, there, there, there might've been like material. glass. Sure. Why not throw a bit of glass in there, throw in a glass, throw in a leaf blower. <laughs> and then we see a, Boston Crab crossface combo onto Nick Jackson by Moxley and Yuta. And Matt returns. Oh, sorry. Claudio and Matt also made their way outside. And uh, Matt was pile driven into the back of a pickup truck and comes back selling his neck. And he super kicks John Moxley to break the Boston Crab. And his shoe explodes in Moxley's face. This is like what they warned you as a kid about like wearing LA lights. And if you step into a puddle or something like what could happen to you. Goodness, and I never wow. believed it, but my parents wouldn't buy me LA lights. Wow. Well, I had pumps and uh, they never exploded like this, but um, well, to me, it's like this to me would be really bad for John Moxley. It would be catastrophic for Matt Jackson. Like if mm. the explosion is from your shoe. Okay. Like your foot is taking the brunt it's, of this, no matter what face how close the face is like your foot is fucked a hundred percent well i mean you don't know what sort of protective coating this this you know this jordan like it, it, nothing it, we literally saw they just took his shoe off and his sock he had no protection underneath probably more protection than moxley's face though well he he lived they hey, it just lived. it looked really cool okay exploding fists exploding ki- pu- ki- feet exploding heads you know this anything is how exploding. sean should have beat brett in anaheim <laughs> um exploding the boyhood truck. dream has truck. just exploded <laughs> is this Mox- the new level of wrestling is this where we're at now like exploding like you know clothesline um exploding elbow drops like or we just add, add Dude, expo- imagine like a, imagine a buckshot larry at that oh, amazing yeah give it to me moxley comes back after his face was uh ripped off by the the pumps and he's got thumbtacks and he pours them onto the mat it's like, oh, we, we've seen thumbtacks a million times. What are they going to do here? Well, they take off Matt Jackson's shoe and his sock, and they lift up Matt Jackson. And, dude, I my stomach turned here knowing what was about to happen, and they yeah. dropped this guy's foot onto these tacks. 
you know, I was not, I just did not need to see this. I did not need this visual. It's so interesting. Like the, you know, our human psychology and what we react to. Cause like we've seen a million times people like, you know, fall on their backs on thumbtacks, like um, even like, I don't know, get, get thumbs, thumbtacks in their hands and their faces. But it's like something about like the foot that we just can't stand. We can't even stand Lego spots. And, you know, the, certainly the thumbtack is taking it to the next level. This is just because, like, we're so sensitive to, like, our feet not even touching anything but, you know, comfortable sole. Isn't there, like, the psychology of, like, you know, like, running across, like, uh, uh, like fire embers and stuff? It's just, like, you if, it, if it's a grand, it's, if it's a mass amount of it that it almost uh, you, like a thumbtack was- board. Yeah. Is this yeah. the next, like, do people do this on retreats? Walk across a thumbtack? I would like to know Matt Jackson's psychology uh, that, that went into the, the spot because uh, it looked <laughs> brutal, but uh, they, they promised brutal and they delivered it to you. And then he takes a death rider and kicks out at two. And then there's a cutter to Nick onto the tax. We see a V trigger to Claudio, Busaiku knees onto Omega and Hangman. And then they place tax into Matt Jackson's mouth for a European uppercut by Swiss. Yuta hits a bridging German and Paige goes to make the save and got there. Like uh, you could argue he was uh, a little late here on, on the save, but nonetheless, big return, big return here from hangman Omega and Paige fight together and they make the comeback. There's a dead eye on Danielson, one winged angel on Danielson. And you think it's over. Yuta makes the save for the team. And then here's hangman. He's like 25 minutes into this Orihara moonsault to Claudio on the floor. And at this point, Don Callis has made his way ringside and Yuta ducks the buckshot. Callis hands off the screwdriver to him and Omega is in the ring, turns around and he sees Don Callis and everyone's thinking, finally, he's going to get his hands on him. When a man with his uh, with a hidden identity runs into the ring, nailing Omega and reveals himself to be Konosuke Takeshita, who has aligned or still with Don Callis. And this crowd is pissed. And Yuta uses the screwdriver to Kenny Omega and applies the seatbelt and pins Kenny Omega in 26 minutes and 57 seconds to end a, a violent, violent spectacle. I don't know how to review this thing, man. It's like, it was just like a barrage of just everything, you know, um, so this match, I thought, had the challenge of justifying its spot in the main event, and I thought it absolutely achieved it. Um, there's no match like this. I mean, there are a lot of like brawls, but there are no matches involving the Blackpool Combat Club, it's specifically the style of brawling that like John Moxley has ushered that makes this such a perfect match type for that just complete, just chaotic violent style um and i love the story that they ended up telling here where it was very clear that this was the blackpool combat club's game and the elite were overwhelmed they're not used to this 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 type of match and this level and um they were basically down several moments here you know they were uh there were several um uh, handicap advantages for the blackpool combat club and i think a lot of wonderful like underdog positions that pairings of of the elite found themselves in all building up to this wonderful sort of like little mini reunion between page and Omega, where they were able to do a lot of their tag team spots again in sort of this last ditch effort to try to like make up for um, whatever they will, however much they were down, but it was spectacular. It was everything you wanted it to be. It never dipped in energy once it was crazy and completely pay-per-view worthy in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, these last two matches were spectacular for what they were totally divergent matches from one another. No one is confusing one with the other, but yes. Was this the most violent match in AEW history? I mean, hard to say. I wouldn't say so. Like what, 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 what would you say is the most violent match in AEW history? Are we talking about blood loss, like being the principal determinant of that? Yeah. I think that I I think your short list would be, uh, I would have to give it some thought because we, we've also seen some really violent ones on Dynamite. The pay-per-view ones that come to mind for me are, are Moxley with, with Kenny Omega, the Lights Out match, and Moxley Hangman recently. That was pretty violent. That might have been it, actually, yeah. in, in terms of imagery. But, I mean, this was... I'll, I'll be honest. Watching this, like, that that Impact main event on Friday was pretty goddamn violent. I mean, yeah. it was, like, not a far cry from this, like, with Steve Macklin and, and PCO. 
Mm-hmm. I think you know, like calling it the most violent match in AEW history was just sort of like a hook, like a like a like a tagline for you, for you to get excited about. Ultimately, coming out of the match, it was me. a hard sell at the end of that show. I mean, right. it's you know, you you have a John Moxley stating that. I think like that would be sort of if you're on the fence about buying a show and that's your last impression on Dynamite. I think yeah. it probably swayed some buys. But if you're like, you know, like watching this match based off of a promo, like I, I don't think you'd come out of this complaining whatsoever. Like this was everything it promised to be. It was anarchy inside an arena. And you had a satisfying, you know, like storyline turn here from Takeshita, uh, which elicited a whole lot of Ibushi chants from this crowd. So it opens it up now because afterwards, uh, Don Callis used his belt to choke Kenny Omega and they still left it as a question if this means Don Callis and Takeshita, by extension, are with the BCC or not. They were the BCC were standing around, but it's not as though there was some big embrace or this was a big plan. So mm. and Excalibur said as much that, you know, the follow up is on Wednesday on Dynamite. So you do have a, a story that comes out of this. You have a lot of different combinations, like from Takeshita and Omega, and the natural question of if Takeshita joined the the BCC, the opening that the elite need a fifth man. Very much so, yeah. Uh, of course, we have Blood and Guts coming up, which tends to be like the second half of these anarchy um, in the arena slash uh, stadium stampede matches. And uh, I think it sets up a wonderful chapter two, you know, where the stakes could even be higher for um, for these groups. And I hope Akota Ibushi, you know, team up with the elite. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know if he's coming. You do a Brandon, Brandon Cutler. Uh, yeah. <laughs> post wrestling and Poison Rana. We are teaming up. The Forbidden Poor, post wrestling and Poison Rana. The same day, if for anyone traveling in for Forbidden Door, we will be literally steps away from the Scotia Bank Arena. It is right next door. It is attached to the arena. We're gonna have a pre-party. John Away, you guys are gonna do a podcast before the show, but it's afterwards that the after party is where things are really gonna kick off because we're gonna do some wrestling karaoke. <laughs> And it's already been promised that a Mr. John Pollock is going to sing All In yes. by Downstate Yeah, he agreed. It was in the contract. We, we've been throwing a few parties before, but nothing this big, nothing this huge. This is our double or nothing, really. And we're so excited. This is going to be a blast. If you're thinking about Forbidden Door Weekend, now is your chance because tickets are available now, aren't they, Way? Yes, they are right now. Postwrestling.com slash live. I'm super excited. 